Namaskaram. I welcome each one of you to this meeting. I am grateful to each of you for taking out time to hear my perspective about Vitligo. This is the first of the series of meetings I will be conducting on different diseases. In all of them, I plan to talk about my experiences in treating these patients over 35 years of my practice. I will be sharing not only my experiences, but the experiences of many patients who have been suffering with these issues. I do not intend to talk about anything that is available on Google. For example, today I will not be talking about what exactly happens to your physical body when you are affected by Vitligo. This is what is available in detail on Google. I intend to talk about what the diagnosis of Vitligo does to the mind of the patient. I am not just going to talk about what homeopathy can do, but what help other systems can do for Vitligo. In short, I will be giving you a holistic solution to Vitligo. At the end of my talk, I will be taking questions from all of you. You may please send your questions on chat. And I am grateful to Dinkar who is with us today and he will ask the questions on everyone's behalf. Once you are diagnosed with Vitligo, your doctor will tell you the following. He will say your pigment producing cells have died or they are failing to produce melanin. He will say that the problem that you are having could be hereditary, it is known to increase with stress. We can give you some external ointments that can help to some extent, we could do some ultraviolet rays on you and this may help. We could even do some skin grafting and cover your patches, but we have no clear idea as to why you got Pitligo. Now, not satisfied with the doctor's explanation, you get back home and you browse Google, trying to figure out what the whole world is saying about Vitligo. You more or less see the same things on the internet and you accept the fact that you have no idea why you got Vitligo and the fact that there is no cure for Vitligo. How can there be a cure when you do not even know the cause of Vitligo? I always keep telling people, that we doctors know only about 20% of what we are supposed to know. What we know, we can cure, like smallpox, malaria, TB, infections, etc. But most chronic conditions, we do not know the cause. We only know the effect and hence medical science can control the symptoms but cannot cure. Cure can happen only if both the effect and the cause are treated. Once you are diagnosed with Vitligo and you have heard from the doctor and Google about the worst that can happen and the knowledge that there is no cure leaves you sad and hopeless. It leaves you with the realization that you are stuck with an incurable disease. In your life you would have seen many people with Vitligo or you would have seen many photographs of people with Vitligo. But in your mind you will select the worst case of Vitligo that you have seen and you will start imagining that you will finally end up like that. You need to understand that there are trillions of cells in your body and they all have an intelligence within them. Your body is the slave of your mind. The body will do everything that the mind tells you to do. For example, move your hands up, move your hands down, sit down to the extent that if the mind tells the body to something evil also, it will obey. The intelligence of the cells in the body, they know how to take a command, but it does not know how to analyze it or think. Has it ever happened that you said, you told your body to jump and the body suddenly stopped and it did not jump, it, it started to think. No, it doesn't happen that way. It can only obey a command. Why I am saying this is, when you constantly dwell on the worst that can happen to you and you keep imagining it, the cells in your body thinks that it is being given a command and it will start working towards it. The cells does not have the intelligence to understand that it's your fears and your anxiety that, that are generating these thoughts. So you slowly start moving towards 
what you have manifested in your mind. That is how a lot of people end up with a lot of patches because they manifest it. Unfortunately, your mind will not look at the millions of people with vitiligo who have very few patches on the body and they look perfectly fine. You will not think of all those people with tattoos that are all over the body with distorted artwork on their bodies which they are proudly displaying. You will not think that you could actually give a shape to your vitiligo patch with a tattoo and that would actually look cool. But these thoughts, they don't come into our mind. There is so much of social taboo about Whitligo, especially if it is a female. You know, I know a young lady who had a very small patch on the corner of her lip. It was a very small patch. She was so conscious of it that she started to speak with her lips together at the corner like this. Hello, doctor, how are you? The patch, of course, got covered, but... Her mouth looked distorted. She actually didn't mind that. But she was happy that she could cover her small little patch on her lip. Can you see the conditioning about Vitligo that we carry in our mind? Now I ask all those people who come to me with Vitligo as to how is it bothering you? What is your suffering due to Vitligo? They say, well, I have vitiligo. I have these patches on me which are spreading. I say, okay, but how is it bothering you? What is your suffering? Is there any itching? Is there any pain? Is there any discomfort? They say, no. But I have vitiligo patch. It doesn't look good. Vitiligo is one of the only problems that I know which has absolutely no suffering. It is one of the only disease which, even if it is left alone, does not produce any suffering or any bad effect on any other organ of the body. Now, for instance, if you take psoriasis, if psoriasis is not treated, it can cause psoriatic arthritis. It can affect the joints of the body. If the diabetes is not treated, it can affect your kidneys and you might end up with a kidney, kidney disease. But vitiligo, if it is not treated, it will just remain as vitiligo. Now, does having a vitiligo patch take away the fact that you are a nice person, a loving person, a compassionate person, a funny person, an intelligent and a smart person? Why is it that you think that a patch on your body will take away everything that you have? Why do you suddenly become an introvert from being a dashing personality? Why does the skin discoloration take away your confidence? Why do you suddenly start wearing full sleeves and cover your patch? Put mascara on your patches and keep them camouflaged? Why do you stop going out meeting people just because you have a discoloration of your skin? Why do you think that people are judging you all the time because of your skin patch? Think about it. Does doing this, doing all this make sense to you? You're not even thinking. Do you think that people love you for your flawless skin, for your physical looks? You may be a very good-looking person. But who cares about you if you're dumb, if you're unintelligent, or if you're not funny, if you're not loving, if you're not compassionate? You love, your looks may get you an initial attention, but it cannot sustain interest in you. Now, I ask all those who suffer with Vitligo, did you get Vitligo because you did something that you are not supposed to do? Did you commit a crime or a sin because of which you got vitiligo? Are you responsible for getting vitiligo? You can always say an alcoholic cirrhosis fellow got cirrhosis because he drank alcohol. He got lung cancer because he got smoking. But what have you done to get vitiligo? Have you done anything? No, you haven't done anything. 
and you all glad that it is vitligo and it is not cancer where your days are numbered or a kidney or a liver disease which would mean constant visits to the hospital dialysis treatment suffering whatever you are suffering because of vitligo is a self created suffering and you are not suffering due to vitiligo would you still like to suffer or be grateful that you got something that just does not cause any suffering think about it it's time to get out of your conditioning it is time to break free from these restrictions and live an unrestricted life it is time for you to fire all your cylinders and regain your confidence in life now let's try and understand vitligo in a different perspective that you may not have read or heard or thought about science says that vitligo is an autoimmune disorder so i began to explore what an autoimmune disorder is now when you read about autoimmune disorder it says autoimmune diseases are our own cells working against us now i started to explore why would my my my, uh, my cells work against me what makes our cells do this the medical science can only tell you that autoimmune disorder is your cells working against it why it is working against it there is no explanation cause is not known so i began to explore why are our own cells working against each other and uh, i came up with something which i will share with you now all of us we go through pleasant and unpleasant events as we grow up from our womb till date it has been scientifically proven that even in the womb the fetus is capable of experiencing pleasant and unpleasant events you know most of us we revisit our pleasant events but unpleasant events we don't recollect but don't you remember most of the unpleasant experiences that you have gone through from your childhood till now and every time you remember these unpleasant events don't you also feel the emotion that goes with it it's okay if you can recollect them that's the function of your brain and memory but if you're still going through the same emotion every time you recollect it isn't it proof that your emotions are still trapped within you today when you recollect these unpleasant events it may appear to be very small event or a insignificant event it may appear very silly that you reacted that way but still when you recollect them you still feel the emotion that you felt then this means that not only is the emotion trapped but even the way you understood it at that particular point of time is also trapped these trapped emotions are what is working against you and making your cells cause autoimmune disorder this is what is meant by your own cells working against you it is these trapped emotions which are working against you but you may say but i don't recollect unpleasant events at all so why would i be suffering though you are not remembering these events all the time the fact that you are able to recollect it and feel the emotion means that it is there either in your conscious subconscious or unconscious dimension otherwise you can't recollect it it is acting active in some dimension of you and working against you and it has been proven scientifically that these emotions cause chronic and incurable diseases within us let me go a step further and try to explain these emotions how these emotions can cause disease in you are you aware that your breath changes every time you are in some intense emotion you breathe differently when you are angry when you are scared when you are sad when you are panicking or breathing changes now this change breathing causes a changed vibration these altered vibrations are trapped within you with these emotions and these trapped vibrations do not sync with the body's vibration that is why they work against you 
the only way you can stop these cells from working against you is by releasing these trapped emotions. Now, how do you do this? I will share with you at the end of the lecture an hour-long guided meditation which I have made to help and guide you with revisiting these many unpleasant events in your life from womb till date. I have made this audio in such a way that you will not only be able to revisit the events that you remember consciously, but also events which are stored in your subconscious mind. I have also made it in such a way that I will guide you to release these trapped emotions. So at the end of the talk, you could connect with me on WhatsApp and I will share the link to the audio. This is an intense experience and it is done best under supervision. Now, what do you do once you're diagnosed with vitiligo? One of the first and foremost things I would focus is to balance the five elements of nature. Earth, water, fire, air and space. Earth. Everything that is there in the earth is within our body. All the elements of the earth like zinc, calcium, magnesium, everything is there within our blood. So to connect with the earth, I would walk barefoot on the ground or grass. I would work with plants. I would water them. I would take care of them. The second element is the water. Our body is made of 70% of water and it is important to keep the water element in balance. I would take long showers and let the water caress my body for long periods of time. I would take multiple showers in a day. If I had a pool, I would spend a lot of time in the pool, would do most of my exercises in the pool and be in sync with the water element. Do you remember when you had a long day and you're very tired, you have a shower and you feel very fresh? Some people have hot shower, some people have cold shower. It is not the temperature of the water that is making you feel fresh. It is a vibration in the water that is rejuvenating the 70% of water within your body. It vibrates the 70% of water. Even your bones have water. That vibration is what makes you feel fresh and vibrant. The next element is fire or heat. Every day of my life, I would spend half an hour in the sun, preferably during sunrise or sunset. This will not only help me in absorbing vitamin D, but it will also allow me the time to appreciate the beauty of the sunrise and the sunset. It is scientifically proven that a lot of medicines, when applied, they are, they are advised to sit in the sun. So sun is a very essential part, particularly for Vitligo patients. The next element is air and space. Balancing this happens by doing yoga and pranayama every day. There are a lot of uh, pranayama or breathing exercises available on YouTube. And I would certainly spend a few minutes correcting my breath because this will help me correct all those trapped with breath breathing within me, which happened during unpleasant events. Now, we are all made of the five elements and it is very important to be in touch with our source of creation. It is like an electric car. It needs to be charged to be able to function. Similarly, our body needs to be charged and this will happen in being touched with the source of creation. So balancing the five elements is of utmost importance in dealing with Vitligo. Now, the homeopathic approach. I will tell you what I've been doing for the past 35 years and the kind of experiences that we had in treating vitiligo patients. Now, you need to understand that when vitiligo hits you, it is a process where a few parts of your body is turning white. This is an internal process. So whatever you do from the outside, you cannot stop the process. It has to come from inside. The only way the process can be stopped is from the inside and that is what exactly homeopathy does. This will take some time so in our experiences, the first response that, that happens is that the new patches stop happening and the existing patches will stop to grow bigger. This is the first thing that happens. You won't get new patches and the existing patches will stop to grow. The second thing that happens is 
repigmentation happening in the existing patches. So these are the two ways we have seen things happen. So we've treated close to 800 patients of vitiligo in our clinic and we've been pretty successful. In the sense, we've been very successful in a few patients. We've been partially successful in a few patients and some patients, of course, did not respond also. When I mean very successful, I mean where we have not just been able to stop the progress of the disease, but we've been able to reverse the vitiligo also. Particularly in children, we have had some amazing results. We've had many kids who come to us with patches on the eyes, patches on the face. And within a few months itself, the process stops and the repigmentation also starts. When I mean partially successful, we've been able to stop any further patch from coming up, any new patch, or we've been able to stop the existing patch from growing any further. So these are the two ways we've been able to help a lot of people. Since vitiligo is an autoimmune disorder, we have done a lot of study on this. And our belief is that it is the trapped emotion that I have mentioned before that is working against you. And there are specific homeopathic medicines to help you to release these trapped emotions. Homeopathy works on an emotional level. So both this methodology can be employed to treat your vitiligo with homeopathy. Another um, suggestion that I would give you is to join Inner Engineering by Sadhguru. It is a process, it is a, it is an event, it's an online course and it will change your perspective and it will let you live joyfully. And being living joyfully itself will take away a lot of your diseases. Now once you are having vitiligo, there are different ways of accepting vitiligo. Because it is only with acceptance that awareness and then, you know, you will have that detachment coming. So there are different kinds of people. Those who believe in karma, accept it as a karma. I remember I met a very uh, respected Swamiji, Sri Ganapati Sachdananda Swami from Mysore. He told me, do not pray for the disease to go away, but pray for the strength to endure the disease. Because by enduring the disease, you're burning your karma and you're freeing yourself for the future. Now, I'm sure there are those of you who don't believe in karma. Those who don't believe in karma and those who uh, uh, believe only in science, you do whatever you think is best. Whatever is the best medicine available, whether it is allopathy, surgery, whatever is scientifically available. But have faith in that process. Do not let your mind make you suffer mentally. Now, those of you who believe in destiny, you must know that what is meant to happen will happen anyways. They can either leave it alone and choose for the body to heal itself or start take, be taking medicines when it begins to affect your normal life or when you begin to suffer or is in a place where it is socially not acceptable, stuff, such kind of stuff. Whatever methodology you choose, from today I wish that you stop suffering mentally and be joyful. In the chat box, I'm going to be sharing my Insta page. I regularly post different perspective on health, lifestyle and different diseases. You could follow me and be in touch with me on that to know the different perspectives. We will also share the recording of these meetings to you, all of you who have attended. If you think that it is going to be useful for somebody you know who's got Vitligo, kindly share the link so that we'll be able to be, we'll be able to help some and become joyful. I think it's a good deed done. Now I'm grateful um, for the opportunity for the time that you have invested in me. I'm now open for questions. Kindly. Send your questions on the chat box so that Dinkar will be able to read it out to me and I'll be able to answer. Thank you so much. I hope you send me questions for answers for which are not available on Google. Thank you very much. Dinkar, all yours.
there are already some questions here, Dr. Manoj. One of it is, uh, what role does diet have in controlling or curing vitiligo? So um, let me ask you this. You see, if if ten of us drink milk, do all of us react the same way? We don't. You know, each of us will react differently. So it is very difficult to say a particular diet for a particular person. It doesn't work that way. It is an individualized thing. Now, in my experience of treating vitiligo, I have not seen uh, diet having any major significant role. People do say that animal fat does affect vitiligo. But if I were you, what I would do is, on the net, there is something called as a dosha quiz, which is available, which is an Ayurvedic quiz. Now, once you take the dosha quiz, it will give you an idea about whether your kapha is high, vata is high or pitta is high. This is an individualized way of looking at diet. It will tell you what are the food that you can eat, what are the food that you're not supposed to eat. And if you're just able to follow that, I think that's the best possible diet that one can get and easily followable one. Because you know that what is good for you and what is bad for you. Yeah, fine. Another question, uh, Dr. Manoj. See, uh, this, this question is, uh, you mentioned about the one-hour audio. Why is it that you are not sharing that link with everyone? Does it come with a cost? Uh, and why is it that you said to connect with you with a message for the link? Uh, so Yeah, you see, um, no, no, it's absolutely free. Let me first tell you that it's absolutely free. There's no charges here at all. But I'll tell you the reason why I am uh, doing this. It is an intense process. I don't think many of you would have entered into or ventured into that dimension of yourself where you're trying to explore your uh, past unpleasant emotions. Now, past unpleasant emotions can be many. It could be uh, that you were sexually or have, uh, scarred as a child or you were exploited as a child. It is not uh, a simple thing to visit them. So, when you visit them, different questions might come up and you will need guidance. And the only reason I am asking you to connect with me on my WhatsApp number is because I am there for you to mentor or guide you whenever you need me. That's the only reason there is no cost involved in it. Thank you. Another question. Uh, as an adult, uh, what you said makes sense to me, but I will use my intelligence and try to change my perspective and be positive. But how do we deal with small kids having this issue? You see, in the talk that I gave, I uh, we discussed about the one of the major reasons why people suffer is because they're very conscious about their patches. They're very aware. They're all the time looking at their patches and feeling bad about it. Do you remember a child being conscious about anything. He can run, he can run naked in front of everybody. He can do dance in front of everybody. He can jump, do just about everything. He doesn't, he's not conscious. But we make them conscious. You know, we as parents, we tell them where you dress, you're conscious, you know, you can't go on like this, you can't do this, you can't. We put so a lot of restrictions and we make them conscious. So the mother, typically, I've seen this with a lot of mothers. It is such a big taboo in our society that the moment your child has vitiligo, you are so protective. You don't want your own family to know about that problem, particularly if it's a girl. So you're all the time to cover up. You're trying to pull the thing down. You're trying to view every day. In some there I know obsessive mothers who... Morning and evening, they go, they look at the patch, they look at it closely, they get a mic magnifying glance and look at it. They are all the time that the child is wondering what the hell is happening to me? Why is my mother doing this to me? Why is she making me uh, uh, cover myself? And the child begins to feel shy, the child begins to feel conscious. So this thing not hitting the child is entirely in the parents' hands. The parents have to change their perspective about Vitligo. There are, unfortunately, in our society, even today, there are so many people who don't shake hands with people with Bitlico, who don't get into the same swimming pool with Bitlico. But if we ourselves 
train our kids that you have to be conscious. You got something that you cannot show to the world. Is it fair? You could be having a uh, liver cirrhosis because of your excessive alcohol and you can put on a good suit and boot, you know, walk around like a gentleman. Nobody knows what the hell is wrong with you inside your body. You could have ruined your lungs because of your smoking, but when you go out, you are the epitome of style. Hypocrisy. So don't make your child conscious. That's the best thing that you can do for the child. Yeah, Dinkar. Yeah, um, closer to this, uh, something similar. I may be a very nice and compassionate guy, but sometimes uh, it happens that uh, I see a person with a skin issue and I just can't be normal with him. I don't mean to be rude, but I have issues dealing with people with skin, uh, skin issues. What should I do? <laughs> so, I was just telling you before this, unfortunately, in our society, we still have a huge number of people like that because of their because they are not aware. It is basically because of their ignorance. But at the same time, there are also people who have OCDs, who have issues with dealing with skin issues. So they have a problem with the sight or at the touch of a person with a skin issue. Now let me ask you, Dinkar, whose problem is it? Is it your problem or is it the problem with the person with Vitligo? It is evidently your problem. You are having a problem to see a patient with Vitligo patch. Your body goes into some kind of freeze mode when you see a Vitligo patch. It has nothing to do with the person suffering with Vitligo. So let us identify here that the problem is not with the patient of Vitligo. The, pa the problem is with the person who is looking at the patient, he needs to be treated. He needs to change his perspective about it. Why should you give in? Because that fellow is feeling abnormal. I am asking you the same question again. Did you get Vitligo because you did something? There is nothing for you to be feeling ashamed of a patch that you have. If somebody is not feeling good about it, that's his problem and he needs to rectify it. That is adding on to his karma. Ignore him. That, that's all I can say. Oh, uh, another question. Everyone knows that Vitligo is hereditary. Uh, I have it, but I don't want my child to get it. How can one stop genetic, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, genetic transfer of Vitligo? <laughs> you see, um, to explain this, I must tell you, um, Something that happened in the clinic, you know, I used to get one family uh, where the, the father, the mother and the two children used to come to me as patients. The three of them were my patients. The father was never my patient. But every time the father would come, you know, those days I used to see once every two weeks. So every two weeks he used to come and say, Doc, sir, my BP dekho na, please. So I saw it the first time. Normal day. Second time, normal. Now, this continued for months together. Every time he would want his BP checked, I said, what's with you? No, no, no. I just check it out. Finally, I told him, congratulations, your BP is high. What he has done is he has manifested it. Now, most of us do this very subconsciously. I must be having cancer. I might be having diabetes. My mother has got diabetes. I'll also get diabetes. My mother is obese. I will also be obese. My mother has got cancer of the uterus. I'll also have cancer of the uterus. My mother has got vitligo. I will also get vitligo. So it's constantly going on and on in your mind. I've told you the cells in the body does not have the intelligence to understand whether you are talking out of your stress and anxiety or you're giving it a command. It will take it as a command. My mother has got Vitligo. I will also get Vitligo. So your cells will start to work towards getting Vitligo. The only way you can stop it is don't worry about it. It is not that everybody whose mother has got Vitligo, everybody will get it. One generation can skip it. One child can get it. The rest of them may not get it. You always see the one who gets it. You go and talk to him. He will always tell you that, yes, I had a fear that I would get it. In the back of my mind, I would always think about it. See, so that's the problem with our mind. Our mind is all the time good, 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 happening. 
Now this has to change. If this has to change, if you are if you're somebody who thinks like that, it's not even it's easy for me to say, no, you don't think from you can't stop from tomorrow thinking about it because you've been thinking about it for ages, for years together. So you can't just stop it. You have to work towards it. And working towards it comes from a space of meditation. A meditation is nothing but being in the present. Putting your thoughts to stop. When your thoughts slowly calm down, these thoughts also will go away from you. And that's the only way to stop it. There are no medicines. There are no genetic uh, remodification that can happen. There are no medicines that can prevent it happening. The only thing that can help you not getting your family's tree of Italy go is your thought process. I hope it makes sense. Uh, and uh, yes, um, I think Dinkar, there are a few. Uh, yeah. Is there any yeah, specific? I'm... Yeah, would you like to? No. One question which uh, uh, quite a few people have asked, and they are almost they asked almost at the same time that you were answering this in your presentation. Um, one was the Ata kyun hai, and here the other question was uh, uh, wherever I search, there is no cause given to Vitligo. What, according to you, is the reason for getting Vitligo? I am keen to know the reason. <laughs> You know, uh, it's funny that uh, there are many amongst us who they just want to know the cause. It's very funny that some people are so stuck up on knowing the cause. You know, I, I had a mother who I was talking to just yesterday. Her child has got what is called as infantile eczema, which is those skin allergies which come in small children. You know, they come, they don't go, they last for a very long period of time. So the child was about three years old. I said, don't worry about it. I can treat you. There are good medicines. We can take care of it. We've been able to help a lot of people. Yeah, doctor, but why did my child get it? Um, I said, what does the Google say? Google says it doesn't know. I said, okay, if Google doesn't know, I'm sure I also don't know because it is not possible. So then I said, look, uh, in our experiences, we have seen that uh, it comes in children who's got a family history of asthma. There and There's no family history of asthma. Um, she said, but I want to know why my child got it. So I said, does it help um, knowing that your child, why your child got it? Or do you want to treat it? No, no, I want to know why my child got it. I said, okay. While you were in your fifth month of pregnancy, you had some kind of unpleasant eventness. You had a fight with your husband. You had a fight with your in-laws. And that is the one that has caused infantile eczema in your child. Now you tell me, what can you do about it? So, you know, that's that's a problem with us human beings. We suffer what happened 10 years back. We also suffer what is going to happen three days from now. That is the reason we push people to meditation. Meditation is being in the now. So, knowing the cause of Vitligo is of no use. What you need to see is I've got it. Now I need to deal with it. That's the only way to do it. Yeah, then. If my mother or father has weekly go, what can I do to prevent it? Dinkar, I think I have answered this in my previous uh, uh, question where the only way you can do is stopping your thoughts. You have to stop your thoughts. You have to stop those negative thoughts that I am, I, I got it in my father, I got it in my mother, I will get it, I will get it, I will get it. So don't let the command uh, go down to your cells and they will, they, they will exactly behave uh, and obey your command. So that's, that's, that's the answer for that particular question. So, uh, well, these are the questions I have, uh, Dr. Manoj. So, there's somebody who wrote, um, is there any specific or common thing which is observed or seen or identified by scientists or researchers so far? No. If, you see, if we knew something scientifically, you see, that's a, that's a good thing about medical science. If we know something, we know how to cure it. Unfortunately, we don't. 
So this is what I told you. We doctors know only 20% about what we are supposed to know. The entire scientific community knows very little about how this piece of body works. We know what the effect is because we know how to cut open, see under the microscope. We know what the effect of a problem is. But why, how, we are still researching. But in my experiences, a lot of these answers can come um, exploring a little bit of spirituality. Now, there is another question. As much as I believe in karma, when I look at myself each day, how can I reassure myself? You need to keep asking yourself, am I responsible? Am I the reason for why I have got Whitley go? If I am not the reason, there is some other reason. That reason has to be something which is beyond me. And people... You see, a lot of Vitiligo patients, they think that everybody is looking at their patch. But that's not true. Nobody in this world has got the time to focus so much energy and attention on your small patch that is there in one corner of your body. It is your mind, it is your thought, it is your perception that everybody is looking at you. You need to start getting out of that. Even if they look at you, so what? Does it change the way you are? They are coming to you for something. They are not coming to you for your past. They are coming to you for your intelligence, for something, for your work, for love, for whatever it is. It doesn't change the way you respond to them, no? Even if you have a patch. So be confident. I'm sure it will help. So I'm going to spend a few minutes here and uh, try to share uh, the phone numbers and on which you can connect. That's the numbers that I have given. And uh, okay, some people are even sending patches, pictures, and all that. But you can connect on this number. You can leave any questions here. I will, uh, I will uh, keep uh, answering them over a period of time. Uh, somebody wrote that there is a patient who is on my treatment, and you know it is getting repigmented. But again, the new patches are happening. That means the process is still not done. So you need to continue medicines for more period of time so that the process ends. It is only a matter of time. If there is pigmentation, if there is repigmentation happening, that means the medicines are definitely working. It's only a matter of time. So that's the number on which you can WhatsApp me and uh, we will also be sending um, the recordings on that and uh, we can be in touch. And I'm once again grateful to all of you for the time that you've invested in knowing my perspective. Dinkar, thank you. Special thanks to you for being a part of this. Grateful. Thank you.